The Dutch arrived in 1652 to establish a halfway station providing fresh provisions for the passing ships traveling to and from Asia. But because of the pending war with England, they needed a stronghold. We are in the heart of Cape Town, digging into the rich history of Cape Town's origin. And what better place to explore than the Castle of Good Hope? So please join us as we visit the castle in Cape Town. Welcome back to another episode of the adventures of Jack Heartland. We're still here in Cape Town, me and Elias traveling around and today we are at the castle, castle of good hope. Is that what that was yeah. called? So we're going to walk around. The cool part about this whole thing is it's got its own private parking area. This is not bad. Huh? <laughs> this is not bad. High walls, the works, rocks and everything. So yeah, let's get into history and check out the castle. Let's just stop for a moment and acknowledge that before the castle there was a fort built just west of the current position. Constructed from earth and timber, it was square with a pointed bastion at each corner. Within the fort were living quarters, kitchens, a council chamber, a sick bay, workshops and storerooms. A nearby stream was diverted and channeled to form a moat around the fort. Being built of earth, the fort needed frequent maintenance and repairs. Built between 1666 and 1679, the Castle of Good Hope is regarded as the oldest remaining colonial building in South Africa. It is shaped in a pentagon with five bastions and flaunts both elements of medieval and English Renaissance architecture. Each bastion is named after the main titles of William III of Oranje Nassau, Buren, Leerdam, Oranje, Nassau and Katzen Allenbogen. In the center was a wall built to protect the citizens in case of an attack from the mountains and it divides the inner courtyard in two. The front courtyard with a bell tower and main entrance also has the entrance to the wall that hosts the residence of the governor, a chapel and the second in charge's accommodation. On the sides of the castle wall was more accommodation and storage facilities in case of a siege. In the back courtyard was the location for the horse stables, workshops, the dungeon and the bakery. On the outside of the structure to the west, a bit of protection was provided by the moat and it is said that the level of the ocean almost reached the northern side of the castle. It's kind of crazy if you look where the current edge of the ocean lies. We're going to start exploring the castle in the front courtyard. In the front courtyard, public meetings would be held and announcements would be made from the cut balcony, made by the governor or staff to the citizens of the colony. The original balcony was built in 1695, but rebuilt in its current form between 1786 
1790. Currently in front of the Dekat balcony, there is an exhibition of main historical figures that made an impact on the local people. This exhibition is called The Kings of the Castle. Sundials were used to tell the time in the early years in the Cape. The sundial on the eastern side was used to tell time in the morning. In the afternoon, the sundial next to the balcony was used and it kept the official time of the entire Cape settlement. The people were kept informed by the ringing of the bell in the bell tower every hour on the hour. Now it is time to walk the castle walls. And so we're on the, the wall. It's impressive because it's like a garden. We did not measure the length of each wall, but as the wall building in the middle of the courtyard is about 116 meters long, the wall would be around 120 to 150 meters. All the bastions are connected by walkway and we are going to walk from Lierdam all the way around and back again. The height of the walls of the bastions on the seaside was 10 meters and those on the land side were even higher, apparently so that in the event of an attack from the ocean, the cannons on the landward bastions could be turned around to fire across the seaward bastions, thus providing more firepower. Now, very interesting is that they painted the walls this yellow color to take the brightness away. Which is personally pretty impressive because they mixed um, white paint with dirt and it became yellow. Very interesting. The reason why they had five points, basically a pentagon, was so that they could defend the place from every corner. And so all the cannons are placed that it could cover all directions. And this cannon can even fire on itself. <laughs> Get the other point. Shoot them from the top. The lookout tower on the roof is known as the captain's tower. This tower used to be the tallest building in Cape Town for many years to come. He had a great view over the whole courtyard and the surroundings outside the castle. It is said that even though they were very scared that this fort would be attacked, this bastion, this castle, it never was. So one of the oldest structures in South Africa that was never, that was built for an attack and never attacked. In the next episode, we will continue our visit, especially going into the dungeons and the wine cellar. <music> <laughs>